I welcome you all to Indian Review of International Arbitration, Distinguished Lecture on International Arbitration by none other than Mr. Kevin Kim, who is a senior partner at Peter and Kim. He, didn't, he does not require an introduction, but it's my duty to welcome him so he is presently a senior partner and previously he was a senior partner at Bai Kim and Lee LLC. In past three decades in various roles he has worked. He has been the co-founder and head of international arbitration practice and head of the domestic and international disputes group of the law firms he has worked with. He has acted as counsel, presiding arbitrator, co-arbitrator, sole arbitrator in more than 300 cases of international arbitrations under various international arbitral institutions. He is involved in plethora of investment and commercial arbitrations. Amongst other positions, Kevin is also an advisory board member of the reputed International Council for Commercial Arbitration. He is the chairman of the Korean Commercial Arbitration Board, International Arbitration Committee, and an adjunct professor at the Seoul National University Law School. In the past, he has served as the vice president, which is a coveted position in the sphere of international arbitration, of the ICC International Court of Arbitration. He has served as Secretary General of ICCA, member of the LCI, LCIA Court, Vice Chair of the IB Arbitration Committee, and many more. He is constantly recognized as a leader in Who's Who Legal. So 2020 Who's Who Legal says about him that Capu, Kevin Kim, is a key figure in the Korean arbitration market who has built a strong network of arbitrators and practitioner and is widely considered a statesman in the market. Uh, it's, it's no exaggeration. It's no exaggeration. Whatever interaction I have with him, what I have understood is not just a market leader. He is also a great human being and his journey is the journey of Korean arbitration law. So that's why today we have him here to speak on the issue of how arbitration has developed in the Korea and what lessons can be learned by emerging arbitral jurisdictions. In my previous discussion with Kevin, he informed me that in terms of volume, uh, Korea is one of the biggest market in Asia uh, of arbitration. So the kind of attention we give while sitting in India to uh, UK, America or other jurisdiction might be exaggerated because in our own Asia, uh, we have leaders like Kevin Kim, uh, who through their three decades of practice is taking their jurisdiction forward and the jurisdiction itself is marching forward in terms of arbitration. So with this small introductory note, I welcome you, Kevin. It's, it's wonderful to host you and on behalf of MNLU Mumbai, we look forward to have a wonderful session from you. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor has joined us, but as I said, he's stuck in uh, some traffic. He will join us in between and probably at the opportune moment, uh, we would look forward to hear him as well from him. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you very much, Professor Payan. Um, very good day to everyone attending this event. Uh, it is my distinct honor and privilege to speak at the event on very interesting topic about development of arbitration in Korea 
and lessons from emerging arbitral regimes. Uh, maybe I can share a uh, slide. So can, can you see my slide? Okay. So I understand that I've been uh, around one hour to speak on, on the topic. Um, and it is uh, a big responsibility for me to ensure that, that the audience will be kept entertained. So while I'll deliver my speech, I will use the PowerPoint presentation uh, only as, as a visual aid. And now uh, projects a few images that I hope uh, will give you some visual insight into Korea. I aim to finish my speech earlier uh, so that we have some time for question and answer that audience, audience may have. So I'll begin and an anecdote about this picture on the screen. Uh, that is from a time when the arbitration is almost non-existent in Korea. Uh, it is a picture of my siblings and me on the fair ride. I'm the tiniest one over there. Uh, I remember that it was, uh, I was about seven years old. It was 1969. <laughs> the, you see the Korean words on the plane, that is the English translation of the phrase is the New York bound. So this is the first plane I was on board. Uh, in those days, uh, living in the West was almost aspirational. So be it in development, industrialization or the technology, the West was the gold standard. For several years, even up to a few decades back, the idea of international arbitration did not catch up in Korea. There are various reasons that could be attributed to late entry of international arbitration into Korea. First, until a few decades back, international business transaction were not common. Uh, not many international agreements were entered into. And as a result of not many international arbitration agreements were signed uh, at the first place. Second, there was a perception that common law dominated international arbitration and Korea being a civil law country uh, there was a hesitancy to embrace international arbitration. Third, the concept of international arbitration was considered foreign, where the West dominated the international arbitration landscape. Fourth, uh, and this is true even to, to date, the domestic courts are very efficient to handle domestic dispute, even international dispute, the Korean court are very efficient at the rank as number one in the World, World Bank record to show shows that the enforcement of a commercial con contract, Korean court rank as number one in the world. If you, if I had to pick one word to describe Korea's, Korea's lies in international arbitration and the current state, that word would be vivid. Although we, we, we like the expression like dynamics. Uh, both Korea parties and council has become very active in international arbitration landscape. The kind of arbitration matters arising out of Korea has been mostly high value and specialized. Uh, such cases are so large that many, many a time they are more uh, sophisticated from the kinds of matters that are 
dealt by older or more established arbitrary, arbitrary jurisdictions. So the natural question that arises is what led to phenomenal growth of international arbitration in Korea? Instantly, the growth came at the heel of Asian financial crisis uh, toward the end of 1990s. Exactly speaking, it was started the, the fall of 1997. The graph on the screen shows that how bad the financial crisis affected Korea in late 1990s. Uh, what was also visible in the graph is that the subsequent Korean recovery. As Korean economy came at the verge of the collapse in 1990s, the IMF undertook its largest bailout ever. One of the terms of the bailout required most corporations and the corporations to be disposed, non-core assets, other companies. This resulted in rapid and large scale foreign direct investments in Korea. International arbitration clauses were inserted in most such foreign direct investment. These clauses led to initial several high value and complex dispute resulting into final worlds. As a result of this process, arbitration as means to resolve dispute standard started becoming a common practice. So after economic crisis, the Korean economy grew rapidly. Uh, this led to formation and strengthening of some of the largest global businesses. Uh, you may heard about the words jebel in, in Korean. That means conglomerate is a, the, the big companies have a group of companies. This group of companies was big even that time, but they became bigger as a global player uh, in the international market. So once the Jebel started investing across the globe, the industry specific disputes uh, also saw an increase. So this led to Korean arbitration practitioners gain industry specific expertise. Once the Korean business businesses saw the advantage of international arbitral world, uh, there was no looking back. So Korean parties soon became active users of institutional rules such as ICC, LCIA, CR, HKIC, and others. So in today's state, even through Korea, uh, even though Korea is the much smaller in size compared to China and Japan, actually China, Korea is surrounded by all big countries. Uh, you can sell, uh, tell, you know, Russia, China, Japan is around us. And then also in, if you just treat Pacific Ocean as US, actually we are surrounded by all big countries. So we always think that we, our country is very small, but actually it is quite small compared to China and Japan. <laughs> the size of economy uh, is China and Japan is four times bigger than uh, Korea. Um, but in the arbitration field, you see, from the record that this is ICC statistics uh, for, for about 10 years, a period, what happens here. But if you just take the, the st statistics between 1998 uh, to 2008, so you see 10, 10 years after this financial crisis, uh, ICC witnesses 442 Japanese parties a 499 Chinese parties from mainland China. But the same period, 665 Korean parties participate in, in ICC arbitrations. So 
their economy is four times bigger than Korean economy. And Korean economy have 665 Korean parties during the period. So much more than China and Japan. That is quite, quite phenomenal. Um, and uh, between 1996 to 2014, the Koreans own arbitral institutions, the, the KCAB, Korean Commercial Arbitration Board. Uh, KCAB administered a total of 10,171 arbitration cases that include 8,837 8, domestic cases and 1,334 international cases. I know that this number is relatively small, very small to Indian <laughs> numbers. But we, again, our, our population and the economy is much smaller but actually case we handle is all serious, very significant amount of dispute. So one, more than 1,300 international arbitration cases experience in the KCAB uh, means a lot um, in, in development of arbitration in Korea. So earlier, most Korean arbitrations were handled by Western law firms. I would say international law firms, we, we call the international law firms, uh, mostly from uh, UK or US. Um, as the demand for arbitration grew, uh, there was need felt to cater to regional clients, uh, including Koreans and Japanese. So several Korean lawyers, uh, especially those who were trained in the West, uh, returned to Korea to build robust international arbitration practice. And the other thing is actually, uh, Korean law firms sending lawyers to abroad after normally five or six years experience. In my case, I, I uh, spent five years as a Korean lawyer uh, during the corporate work and litigation. And I went to uh, Harvard Law School for LLM. And after that, I, I practiced uh, in New York and London um, so almost two years uh, time and then came back to Korea to, to this uh, international arbitration. So many of my colleagues have same background. Then we also have many American lawyers uh, who were trained in America and came to Korea uh, to work together with us. And we, now we have lawyers from India, uh, Pakistan um, and Singapore, uh, we have lawyers from Australia, France, Germany, all different countries. So we all work together uh, in, in Korea. So the inherent ad advantage uh, they had was the understanding of Korean culture. Um, and then they, they understand the, the Asian things. So the Korean lawyers continue build, building uh, their capacities, especially through counseling with experienced international firms, uh, mostly from uh, UK or US. So we have many cases with co-counsel with the international law firms, and we learn their, their technology, their, their know-how, how they handle the case. Uh, so with time, the Korean uh, lawyers uh, have understand how we deal with international arbitration. And uh, uh, we, we became familiar with the international arbitration and particularly best practice of international arbitration, started ad adopting those practices in our style of handling international arbitrations. So uh, we also started getting involved in the more advocacy as the, we, we became comfortable with international practices. So Korean client also be, became more comfortable with the Korean lawyers uh, because of cultural or linguistic complexities. So gradually, uh, some of Korean uh, firms were doing their own advocacy. Additionally, 
they were to also manage cases through uh, their complete uh, life cycles. So as of today, uh, there are practitioners uh, not only representing Korean parties in international arbitration, but also global parties in international arbitration that has little or no link uh, with, with Korea. Since the opening of a uh, legal market for foreign firms, the foreign firms uh, have also started setting up their arbitration practices in Korea. So in the, the last 20 years, the market has come to a long way uh, from its infancy to uh, adolescence. So while I think is a, uh, it has matured fully, it still has a large a scope to grow further in very advanced market. Okay. Now I brief uh, briefly delve into how, in the past two two decades, the arbitration practice grew from uh, strength to strength. One of the key factor has been knowledge sharing. Uh, the most established Korean practitioners uh, took it upon themselves to promote the international best practice in the local uh, legal community. The first generation of the arbitration practitioners in Korea to which I belong, uh, had the first movers uh, advantage. And uh, we knew that to keep the arbitration story of the Korea strong, uh, there was a need to prepare new generation of lawyers so that they are at par with their counterparts across the globe. The Korean firms also started hiring international practitioners to bring in diverse set of practitioners. The input from foreign lawyers has aided in making Korean inter international arbitration landscape sophisticated and advanced. As of today, uh, there are several international attorneys from across the globe who are working in various Korean firms and practicing international arbitrations. So if you see that Korean law firms, the particular arbitration practice group, you cannot tell which qualification that particular lawyers have or the background. We don't care about qualification. We don't care about the background or nationality, race, women and uh, men, it, it doesn't matter. We just work together as one team and whoever is good, they take the lead in the team. So uh, they are adding value to Korean arbitration landscape with different skills, some of which include language, bigger background and advocacy. At the same time, uh, they are also getting exposed to the K way of practicing uh, arbitration uh, in, in international arbitration. So as accumulation of these factors, uh, we can see Korean law firms feature most global rankings and international arbitration practices. So among 100 uh, law firms listed in GAR 100, you can find six Korean law firms there. So actually our firm, Pit and Kim, <laughs> We actually, our name is, uh, you can find in, in, in a Switzerland, but actually our Korean side is bigger than uh, the Swiss side. We are quite even numbers and we have a bit more people in, in Korea. So we, it just, you just put our, our firms together with the uh, other Korean law firms. We have at least the six, the uh, Korean law firms uh, among the 100. And in addition, in addition to six law firms, as many international law firms also very, quite active in the Korean market. Um, the success of Korean story of international arbitration could not have been possible 
without active government support. Uh, when the Korean government saw uh, that effort of, of legal community was yielding result, it further aided by providing crucial support. That support has been instrumental in enhancing Korea's reputation, a truly worthy and attractive seat for arbitration. I personally involved in uh, persuading Korean government uh, interested in arbitration and then um, they, they, they committed to the international arbitration. It was actually, it's very uh, uh, lucky, you know, for, for Korea because at the time we tried to promote international arbitration. We had huge claim from a, a um, international fund against Korean government. So that that uh, the case actually lasted uh, uh, for late, late uh, eight years. The Korean government naturally interested in international arbitration, or oh, international arbitration is quite important matter. Uh, so we successfully uh, persuade government to um, make a separate law, so called Arbitration Industry Promotion Act. That is special act to allow the Korean government uh, make a financial support to the arbitration industry. So you, can, you see the picture here, the Seoul IDRC as its arbitration facility that was uh, uh, funded by the Cor Korean government. So uh, Korea uh, was pi pioneer among the East Asian countries to adopt uh, model law in 1999. So we are the, other than Hong Kong and uh, Singapore, we are the first uh, country adopted UNCITRA model law in 1999. And the, not only that, uh, but it has also kept updating its arbitration law uh, when it's required. So in recent times, it was updated to incorporate some of 2006 revisions of the model law uh, that happens 2016. So additionally, Korean judiciary has been regularly training judges. Uh, this helped the international arbitration landscape as court uh, supportive of arbitration process. So far, uh, Korean court have a clean record. So meaning that there is no single international arbitral word. Uh, vacated or rejected to the enforcement. No single case. There is a one, recently there was two cases where the local court, the district court refused to enforce and that was appealed. And then Supreme Court say, you must respect the arbitral word, even though there are some, some issues with there. So we still maintain the perfect record of enforcement for an arbitral word in Korea. And the government and other uh, international organizations such as Singapore International Arbitration Center has assisted in setting up this uh, high technology and convenient hearing contents. Um, and then together with that, the court and the uh, government and this international effort putting together the Korea as very stable uh, arbitration law and practice. Um, other ancillary services has also taken shape in, in Korea, including translation and transcription, transcription service. And what has been instrumental in helping international arbitration in Korea is the Korea uh, status as global city. Uh, Seoul is very well connected and almost uh, every, every capital city across the, around the world. And Korea has a reputation of neutral country uh, that makes an attractive destination to position itself as arbitra arbitration seat and venue. And recently you see uh, many arbitration conducted virtually. So this is a quite interesting development here. Of course, our uh, you know, internet speed is world best uh, we, our uh, internet speed is about 200 times faster than other countries. Uh, in addition to that, this COVID-19 situation 
the Korea is quite unique because we are allowed it to work in office. We heavily regulated in you know, dinner places or <laughs> other social gatherings, but working in office, we have, a, we, we have no restriction. So we can work together within the office. So many international councils coming to Korea to work together in Korean office, uh, you know, virtually connected to, uh, to, to the tribunal. So I see our, our co counsels uh, came to Korea, we work together in our office. And then the opposing party also get together in the di different uh, uh, Korean law firms office and work together from that location. Um, and then arbitrary arbitra arbitra tribunal is sitting in, in the foreign jurisdictions. That is kind of new development um, in, in the COVID-19 situation. So over the years, uh, Korea Commercial Arbitration Board, uh, otherwise known as KCAB, has come up uh, uh, the official arbitration institution of Korea. It enjoys support, not only the government, but also local and international firms and institutions. So as, as I explained before, uh, they maintain good case record and they handle the case uh, quite, quite well in practice. In, in particular, um, it, KCAB established KCAB International uh, in 2018, a separate body as uh, so within the same same umbrella. So it's very similar to ICDR and in, in, in a triple A. So this is uh, a a separate a, a people to support international uh, parties um, in the KCAB arbitration. So KCAB uh, now have a a. a a separate committee, International Arbitration Committee, which I'm, I'm chairing, uh, have uh, lots of uh, practitioners from uh, all around the world to give advice and initiative that KCAB International uh, become real international. So with success of KCAB and KCAB International, uh, next the pro progression has been toward we call the KCAB Next. So like other uh, initiatives globally to promote international arbitration among the new entrant to the arbitration into different regions of the world, KCAB Next aim to in, induce, induct uh, Korean practitioners into international arbitration world. Um, so that is the, um, the investment uh, for the future, I would say. So in the past, um, there is another new, a, it's not recent development, it's a kind of interesting things that uh, to you, uh, B, there is agreement between North Korea and South Korea uh, about arbitration. So meaning that there is any dispute between North Korean companies or South Korean companies, the both government had the agreement that such a dispute will be resolved by arbitration. We cannot call international arbitration because we have political issue, but whether you call domestic or international, we have the agreement that dispute will be resolved by arbitration. Uh, so that is the, um, specifically called agreement on procedure of a commercial dispute resolution between the parties in South and North Korea. So that is 2000. And there is another agreement, those agreements on organization, operation of inter-Korean uh, inter, inter commercial arbitration board. That was 2003. So uh, the, the regime is already established. And uh, in the Korean side, South Korean side, uh, we already established the group within the KCAB. So we are waiting for the response from North Korean side. Um, as for the procedural rules, UNCITRA arbitration rule uh, a, was adopted main reference for procedural rules uh, to be agreed between Korea and North Korea. 
Um, and uh, it's particularly North Korea recently adopted CISG. So with CISG, uh, with this uh, arbitration uh, regime, then we can effectively resolve the commercial dispute between North Korean companies, Korean, uh, South Korean companies in the sale of the of purchase of the goods. And there is a separate in industrial area called the Kaesung Industrial Complex. Uh, we call the Kaesung Industrial zone, Economic Zone. Um, we have recently had some difficulties, but in, in 2013, that Kaesung Industrial Complex also have inter-Korean joint committee. Uh, they signed actually implementation of uh, uh, agreements of Korean um, arbitration, commercial arbitration board for commercial arbitration board for Kaesung Industrial Complex. So the, again, the arbitration became the main tool uh, to resolve dispute between North and South Korea. All right, so Korea seems to court world attention for many reasons in recent uh, years. K-pop, K-drama, K-technology, K-cosmetic, and you can see the Squid Game is now quite popular around the world and everybody talking about Squid Game. Um, so Korea, a, you see, what, what's happening here is that that is not near Korea. You say Korean, K-pop is not, not the Korean music. It's just the music of all, all different you know, cultures. K-drama is, of course, we are talking about Korean life, but not traditional Korean things. It's something like we just like from, we just take ideas from all around the world. Same applied to Squid Game. The, okay, the game they're playing there is the game I played when I was very young. But the drama itself is very modern. It, it's just international. So that is what we call K something. Uh, we, we do not insist that the Korean traditional thing should be the standard. We say uh, international things Korea adopted and then make it and they found that it's international, became international again with the name of the K something. So we put the uh, in the same way, K arbitration uh, that has a similar ring to popular <laughs> siblings that, you know, fast catching up. So the K arbitration means not a particular arbitration from Korea. We say, good practice, good arbitration practice, best arbitration practice we can use in other countries, we call the K arbitration. Recently, I introduced the Gangnam arbitration because actually I found that the Gangnam is better known than Seoul. <laughs> so Gangnam arbitration is just like we have more hearings uh, for, you know, to encourage tribunal engaged uh, in the process in early stage. Um, and then we have some, some ideas of the witness conferencing or more effective way to uh, document production. All those ideas, uh, not naturally necessarily coming from Korea, but we adopted such an ideas from all different jurisdictions and just to summarize and establish that, uh, I try to establish that is, it should be used is, as international um, in, in international arbitration society. That is our, our hope. So in conclusion, um, it must take away from Korea's example and in emerge the key international arbitration uh, player um, and uh, it, you know, uh, the, this important thing is there is a coercive effort by all stakeholders to promote international arbitration and emerging regime. So that includes the arbitration council, parties, arbitrators, judiciary, government, arbitrary institutions, 
uh, we, we actually all work together to promote international arbitration. Uh, they make uh, international arbitration successful uh, in, in Korea. So any emerging regional regime will have to tackle the work of each of their rebels simultaneously. So imagine to imagine the, the ecosystem like the uh, chariot where each of hills have to function independently uh, and together uh, at the same time. So any effort to strengthen one limb while the other rim suffers uh, will only lead to stagnation of arbitrary regime. Um, so well, um, that was a, a brief overview of the growth of the Korean arbitration industry and the lessons from, uh, from it that can be implementing an emerging arbitration jurisdiction. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, if, if there are any, and I'm grateful again for inviting me to speak at this platform on this topic. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for your uh, enlightening uh, lecture. We also have uh, the presence of our own rebel vice chancellor who could not join us early because of the traffic. Uh, sir, before we take questions and answers, would you like to uh, give some comments. Sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chirag. Our today chief guest, uh, Mr. Kim Kevin, the senior partner in the Korean law firm, my colleague and coordinator of uh, Center of Arbitration and Research, Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai, other colleagues and dear participants. It has been indeed a really a great pleasure to listen to Mr. Kevin, Mr. Kim, on such a final points of uh, the arbitration and particularly the Korean experience. I apologize for little more delay because of the traffic in Mumbai. Traffic is so much uh, more over after weeks, holidays. I do not know whether it has been pointed out that the National University here in, in Mumbai was established uh, six years before. This is now seventh year. Very new offer. Uh, BA will be honors five years degree course as well as one year LLM regular course having specialization in multiple disciplines including maritime law and along with that uh, we have other courses like uh, particularly the postgraduate degree MA in mediation and conflict resolution which was started introduced last year this is the second year wherein we are received the overwhelming response in both these years. Along with this, we have 14 centers like Center of Maritime Law and Research, Center of Mediation and Research, and Center of Arbitration and Research in Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. Our aim or the goal is not only to impart the legal education, but at the same time, to contribute into the current, recent, and required needs and demands of the changing time. At the outset, uh, I welcome, though his lecture is over, Mr. Kim, and thank him on my behalf and on behalf of the Maharashtra National University, Mumbai, for having accepted uh, our invitation and graced the occasion and enlightened all of us on such a important team. As uh, Mr. Kim has pointed out, uh, I, I could listen few things hardly that uh, the Korean experience uh, or Korean model, if at all, it is permissible to call it whether we, we also can adopt uh, that model vis-a-vis -vis 
arbitration is concerned rather we are coming up uh, now on a about the conference of arbitration international conference on arbitration in energy laws in the next year next month itself and uh, today as we do understand and realize everywhere around the globe just uh, a week or so before the conference on environmental and climate change which has happened conducted international conference at glasgow sweden wherein uh, the issue about uh, net zero and uh, carbon which has come up rather uh, there is a divide between developed and developing countries developing countries uh, point of view is that uh, it is the developed countries responsibility to contribute into the climate change fund or environmental fund where is whereas developing countries have a certain different kind of point of view from this perspective every country needs the energy so instead of uh, the traditional orthodox ways of generating energy like the thermal powers to switch over to the green energy and from that point of view even the issues of and conflicts of uh, interest which which will which are going to be occurred and which are occurring also to address those conflicts and international conflicts also to address that or to review that uh, we have decided to organize uh, international conference on arbitration vis a vis the energy laws asked so the the aim is not only to impart the legal education but at the same time to tap and tackle such issues wherein we can contribute in some way with the great help support and affinity of people like mr kim so that uh, the not only participants not only india as well as korea or other countries will benefited the whole world could be benefited out of it from this perspective from this point of view the today's program and mr kim's uh, enlightening speech is really very very useful very very beneficial to all of us so with this uh, i thank once again mr kim kevin for enlightening enlightening us and hope that uh, in future too we'll have kind of a not only cooperation kind of a personal bond with in, at institutional level as well as at personal level with this i thank once again to him as well as all of you thank you so much thank you sir it uh, really means a lot uh, that you could share the time and could personally come and welcome our guest uh, it's very important that how each small thing we do we contextualize in the broader context of how the globe is shaping how the environment is shaping and in fact you have very rightfully pointed out in the sphere of arbitration environment is becoming one of the major concerns and how an arbitration which is meant to be confidential which is meant to be a private affair such environmental issues can also be pitched in uh, we are going to see that in the near future thank you for bringing that out uh, kevin now if you permit we would like to move to the question and answers my myself i have uh, plenty of questions from your presentation i would like to understand the korean law better but before that let me give an opportunity to our participants here today uh, so if anyone has any question please either put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand and before we get the questions so let me uh, put one question to you kevin 
So you talked about earlier that in Korean, in Korea, Korean courts have never refused enforcement. Uh, so what are the reasons? Is it because the awards are very well drafted? Is it because of the pro enforcement bias, which is utilized? Or what is the reason? Not a single award, which could be questioned on the ground of property. Can you elaborate more on that? Oh, yeah, uh, that is quite a good question. Um, and I say, you know, arbitration, many people ask me, um, why, why we have we, Korean companies have many arbitration? Um, I, I think, you know, of course, the Korean companies have a lot of international transaction. Uh, but in addition to that, the Korean companies, uh, Korean companies are a bit different from Japanese companies. They're willing to fight if they're good reason. So the 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 case in the Korean companies involved normally very serious. If they don't have good defense, they don't have arbitration. They just <laughs> agree to to settle. Uh, but when they have good reason, they fight. Um, but the normally they nominate quite the well-known arbitrators. Uh, they normally agree to uh, very well-known international arbitration institutions. So arbitral word to be enforced in Korea, mostly from ICC, LCIA, uh, CIAG, HKIC, um, and uh, and is uh, normally handled by very well uh, reputable arbitrators. Um, I, I don't check every case, um, but as far as I understand, the, the case that we went to the enforcement procedure, uh, so all serious cases, okay. the, the normal cases actually, they, they settle in, in, in the middle or, or the Korean parties voluntarily unfold the, perform the obligation under the arbitral world. And the Korean code um, have, have very strong feeling that the court shall not interfere with the arbitral uh, award. Uh, so there is some case where the Korean court handle jurisdiction issues as court case, meaning that you have arbitration agreement. Uh, one party say, oh, we don't have arbitration agreement we pursue litigation. Then Korean court uh, reviewed the case. They found that, okay, they have jurisdiction over the case, they proceed. There is some occasion like that. But uh, once the tribunal issued a word, then Korean court, particularly Korean Supreme Court, uh, really tried to respect the arbitral word enforced as, as is. So unless we have problem with the arbitral um, arbitration agreement or uh, some, some significant issues, but as the public policy or the other procedural uh, issues, uh, some issues and the opportunity to present the case, the old Korean court all rejected their you know, challenge. Uh, so far, arbitration agreement wise, uh, there is not many cases. I, I understand there are two, three cases. Again, the court, Supreme Court, respect the tribunal's decision. Just say, okay, we agree with the tribunal that this arbitration will exist. So that is the the uh, the background. Maybe in the I know I I, I think it's not why right. the Korean court blindly votes <laughs> all the arbitral word. Uh, so maybe someday. We will have some case where the Korean court refused to enforce arbitral word because there is no arbitration agreement. Uh, but so far, we had Korea, uh, Korean court have maintained clean record. So there is a similar question from the participant. So the add on is whether any modification has been made as compared to the model law, which has resulted into this efficacy or pro-enforcement bias, or is it very similar to the model law? The question is more about setting aside provision. 
Oh, any we, convention. Yeah, our arbitration act is almost same as just translation of Unsitra Modelo. Yes. We just take word to word. Right. Um, and because actually normally uh, the Korean legal system is just a, okay, for example, we have New York Convention. So your convention applied to Korean um, a, a, as, as a matter of Korean law. We, we, we do not make any separate law to enforce the your convention. We just use the your convention as it is. Same apply to CISG. So CISG, we use the CISG wordings rather than making separate enactment. Uh, in case of arbitration act, because once you about that law have several options. So we take the option, but we never modify the contents of the uh, Unsitra model law. Exactly, that is quite general attitude of Korean society uh, because, because we, we are educated, it just say we are the small country and we, ha we have to do international transaction. We should be international. That's quite, we quite obsessed the idea that we should be international <laughs> and neutral. So uh, that is why you see that other K drama, K, K pop, you know, we, we never insist that the, we, uh, our traditional thing should prevail or that this should be the right way to do that. We never thought such, such a thing. So when he adopt the arbitration law, we try to adopt the, what is the most international, internationally acceptable standard. So once we found that there's international acceptable standard, we, we never hesitant to, to take, take it as, as our things. So that is why we actually adopted Unsitra model law five years earlier than Japan. And we also adopted the revised Unsitra model law in 2016 uh, for the first time in among the Asian, uh, East Asian countries. That also shows that the Korean society as a whole uh, willing to take international standard. Whether arbitration is preferred more than mediation? Uh, mediation is separate, you know, uh, uh, recently, particularly recent two years, uh, when you have a Singapore uh, convention, mediation became big issue in Korea. So again, because we found that mediation is became international trend. So uh, when I meet the client nowadays, the client always asks me about mediation. So that, that, that never happens before, uh, but arbitration is still, the parties agree to arbitrate in the contract, but in the before the arbitration or in the middle of it, arbitration. I see many occasions, the Korean parties uh, looking, they, they are looking for a mediation opportunity. So we, I have some case where uh, we mediate before the arbitration, uh, we fail to uh, agree, then arbitration started. And then some, some time later, party settled the case based upon discussion they had the mediation before the arbitration. And we have another case where the, uh, the case, arbitration case was bifurcated and the tribunal decided on the liability. So before the case moved to the quantum, uh, parties mediate in London, just two days, we settled the case. So the mediation became uh, uh, quite population nowadays in Korea. Whether such mediation is part of an arbitration clause? Uh, not that way, actually, that, you know, they, of course there's some, some case where the, there's mediation, mediation became arbitration, but the, normally uh, the contract itself was only arbitration clause because we don't, adjudication is not, not popular in Korea at all. Uh, in some jurisdictions, education is quite popular, but in Korea, 
uh, when you have dispute, we go to arbitration, but party voluntarily agree to mediation. So far, um, the mandatory mediation is not that popular yet because sometimes you, you just see the delay uh, of the arbitration process and you have mandatory mediation clause. I have one case where recently uh, there is a mediation clause, mandatory mediation clause um, in arbitration clause. So mediation just lasts for six months, parties waiting uh, just six months without no, no result, but that's a mandatory mediation clause for six months. Right. In your presentation, you mentioned about high internet speed in Korea and virtual hearing. So question is, what if one of the party objects to the virtual hearing? Will the arbitrator still proceed in Korea? In Korea, yes. Uh, I understand that ICC, I, when I was at ICC court, ICC court actually reviewed that issue and then the we finally declare that uh, under the ICC rules, arbitration tribunal can proceed um, arbitration virtually. Um, but there is some issue, you know, depending upon which institution you're dealing with. But in, in Korea, there is no, no restric restric restriction. And uh, because, you know, at board meetings and uh, other all important meetings, uh, are conducted in Korea virtually, even before this COVID-19 situation. And we have some, uh, we have court, uh, you can attend the court virtually. We use the court for virtual system you know, in a court because when the party is located in Ireland, they cannot travel, then just judge, just see the party through video. That happens before uh, virtual hearing. So uh, in Korea, the virtual hearing itself, uh, you, you don't have issue to admit that that is the, the, the hearing uh, as defined as hearing, unless the, the institution rule specifically require uh, the physical hearing rather than virtual hearing. Thank you. Uh, earlier you mentioned in your presentation about involvement of practitioners from India, Pakistan in your law firm. Uh, we do not see uh, much of that in India or in Indian law firms. So does this diversity of practitioner in a law firm offers any kind of advantages in terms of growth of arbitration? Yes, because international arbitration, you uh, when you have, you know, even Indian parties have arbitration, you naturally have the opposing side from different countries, right? They could be Korean, it could be Japanese, Chinese. So when you have uh, different uh, uh, lawyers from different jurisdictions, uh, for example, when you have, you know, my colleagues, uh, the Indian lawyers, we don't expect any Indian related case. We just hire them because they are, they are good lawyers. Right. Uh, they speak good English. They, they are well-educated, experienced in international arbitration. So we work together and then, you know, they are learning the Asian practice. So involving Korean, Japan, China, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, such a practice. Uh, so we learn together as one group, uh, we ha I had the previous colleagues, uh, you know, when I established this law firm, one of my, my first colleague was, uh, he, he was from Pakistan. Uh, he's now into the, uh, the MBA program in, in America. Very internationalized person. So, and we have the lawyer from Singapore. Again, we never actually rely on Singapore law specific advice. From, from that lawyer. Uh, we just work together um, dealing with that issue. So Singapore lawyer is a common law lawyer. Uh, we exchange ideas, how we see that issues as a civil lawyer and a common law lawyer. And Singapore lawyers can read Chinese characters. We can read Chinese characters. We have some common things. 
while we have American lawyer or Australian lawyer, totally different view, right? Have no idea about Chinese characters, and they they never uh, understand, you know, uh, some Asian uh, settings. Uh, why the age is so important, for example. So that because international dispute, you have to deal with those issues together. Uh, that, that is the beauty of international arbitration. So it's always useful when you have the members from different jurisdiction and they understand of different culture, different background and, and the language. Language is another big issue. Uh, we, uh, actually, Peter and Kim, uh, we, we can cover like 17 different languages within our firm, right? <laughs> but you know, uh, but it, you know, particularly in Asia, the language really matters, and together with the governing law. So that that I, I think you know is very useful when you have uh, lawyers from all different countries. So I'll just ask one last question on the aspect of language. And uh, our young candidates' prospect of working with Peter and Kim. So, whether proficiency of English is enough, or whether some kind of acquaintance with Korean is also required. No, no Indian lawyers in our firm speak Korean. <laughs> yeah, English is good enough. <laughs> no, you don't have to speak. It's, it's actually we support them to learn Korean. Okay. Um, because you know now now learning Korean is useful in you know, see the Korean dramas and <laughs> Korean songs and but you know <laughs> we don't require the uh, our foreign lawyers um, a Singapore we have Singapore lawyer French lawyer they never speak Korean it, it, it doesn't matter actually the English is good enough can you register to a Korean bar without the language requirement Korean bar no you have to you have to pass the Korean bar exam, which is okay. which is in Korean. Uh, but as foreign legal consultant, you you still can register your qualification uh, in Korea. And then, if you're working for the law Korean law firm, you don't ha have to register as foreign legal consultant in Korea. Uh, as working for the international law firm, you have to register as foreign legal consultant. But if you work for the Korean law firm, uh, you just uh, you just work for the Korean law firm without such, such a qualification. Correct. So I think we still have questions coming up, but I think for the sake of time, uh, we should stop. I personally enjoyed the session a lot. It was an excellent session with beautiful pictures from Korea. So <laughs> it served two purposes: knowledge as well as it was a kind of trip to Korea. I, I, saw the infrastructure it's so beautiful maybe in future some of us who is attending this session today would love to visit korea and uh, see the development firsthand uh, thank you so much uh, kevin it was a big pleasure to have you here giving this distinguished lecture uh, we are truly honored thank you so much thank you very much thank you for inviting me Bye. Yeah.